Many years ago, I finished the landscaping on this end of my house right here with these three leather leaf viburnum plants. They've done really well. I've had to cut them back several times. And another thing that's done really well is right up there, you can see the top of it. It's a cherry tree, like a wild cherry of some sort. I'm thinking it's called a choke cherry. And I'm gonna cut it back again. This is gonna be probably my third or fourth time cutting it. Today I'm gonna try a new tool for cutting back that choke cherry. It's this blade right here. It's a Forrester 9 inch carbide saw chain grass brush blade. This has 20 saw chain blades on it. See that close look at it. So this goes on my Echo 3020T brush trimmer. Let me show you the uh, cherry tree we're taking out. This is it right here. This thing, I swear I cut this thing back a year ago and it's out about 10 feet. This right here is also, you can see it has that cherry pattern to it and I'm guessing I'm not sure the height on that it's probably at least 12 feet high so now it's time to get this thing mounted and get to work the trimmer that I'm going to use to run this blade right here is the Echo 3020T this is a 30.5 cc engine trimmer and let me just show you the handle setup I have. I did put on here a conversion kit to make it run from a line trimmer to a brush blade. A lot of trimmers that you see might have those bicycle handle mounts. I really don't like those too much when I'm working on hills, so I decided to go with this model right here. And then what they do is they have this handle right here that mounts on, and this is, a lot of people think this might be like a this might be something that you grab, but this is actually a protector to have it kick back and come at you. So as you can see, this handle, it sticks out right here. That's meant if you have a kickback, that catches your leg. And then there's a different guard right here that uh, is different than the line trimmer. When I got the Echo Brush Cutter Kit, it came with this 10 inch blade right here. I think this is a 80 tooth brush blade. And then from my local Echo dealer, I bought this 10 inch blade right here. It's a three tip blade. And this actually just looks like it's smaller than this, but it's interesting how it does, as you can see, that's a 10 inch diameter. And not to say, these two did pretty well. I'll show you some of the brush and saplings that they went into. But now that I'm going to some of that thicker cherry stuff, I am very excited to see how this carbide tooth blade will cut into it. All right, the installation process is pretty easy. You may have to see what your arbor size is. That one I know will fit. And then make sure you get the blade direction going the correct way. So I know I checked it out. So if I have this facing upward, that's the correct direction. And then you have this nut. Let's go get a wrench and tighten it. And the one thing I want to mention, when you're using this setup right here, if you don't have the bicycle handle, tight brush cutter to use the harness strap, which I'm going to go get right now. And I am going to clip it on this right here. And then we're ready to get going. If you watch my channel for a while, you'll see me use the Echo brush blade in here, kind of alongside this little wooded area. And let me show you what I've done. I created a path in here. So here you can see a little bit what the brush blade did right there. That seemed to cut through that stuff pretty well. I'll just use the size of my hand right here so you can kind of see it cut that. Real nice right here we have some deer that are rubbing on the silver maple. There's another cut right there. In the small wooded area of my yard right here, I do want to clear out this part right here and make a fire pit area. One thing that's important to me and to share with you in my videos is to stress the importance of wearing safety equipment, personal protection equipment. So the first thing, first thing I want to mention is having face, hearing, and head protection. The second thing, Kevlar chaps. Since I haven't used this yet, I don't know what it's gonna do. I'm pretty sure I can guess that it's gonna smoothly go through it. In case it doesn't, I wanna make sure I'm ready for any kickbacks.
All right, here's my plan. I got everything all set up on here. It's really pretty quick and easy to switch blades out. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the smaller branches and then kind of work my way into the thicker stuff just so I can get a feel for how this works. The one thing I'm gonna do is put my GoPro somewhere in there. Hopefully I don't hit that. Fire your engines. All right, my initial reaction, it really cut through nice so far. It goes through kind of fast. Like once it's committed into that branch, it just seems to dig right into it. So that's one thing you have to just, I guess, be aware of. The other safety tip I was thinking about that's really important, if you're cutting something tall, just be aware that it could fall back on you. So you might want to take it down sections at a time. So now we're going to go with this one right here. That's pretty thick. Section, let's take down the top section. All right, so this is what I'm noticing. It works really nice if you cut on this side. When you get on that side, then it seems to want to rip right into it. So I'd say when you're cutting, try to go from right to left. I think you're gonna have the best control that way. But that's my initial thought right now is the small skinny stuff, I think you could, you could go from left to right, but for that bigger stuff, go from right to left. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. I really, I definitely learned. And I tried pushing the limits a little bit. So the one thing that around the house or anywhere, it's nice to be able to cut some of those saplings flush to the ground. So in case somebody, yeah, like kids playing or if some, someone happened to fall and you had this spiky thing sticking up, that could be really dangerous. So this is really great. I was able to go around here and just skim the ground. I didn't seem to ever put any of these blades into the dirt, which is great because that dulls them right away. Now I'm gonna grab my chainsaw, cut that out right there, cut that flush. Then I think we're pretty well wrapped up here. I just had to haul the limbs away. If you were to ask me my final thoughts after using this blade for a good 10 minutes, it definitely passed my test. I really like it. And when I go into the woods over there to do some clearing, this is the one I'm gonna use. So as you can see, See if we have any wear on it. See, <laughs> wore the paint off, but it looks like everything's, all the teeth, everything looks like it's on there nice and solid. Okay. I had a chance to meet the Forester Company actually at the GIE event in Louisville, Kentucky last month. This is another one of their blades right here. This is brand new. I believe this is a 40 tooth. I think they're carbide tipped. And this one has all these holes in it, so this is really lightweight, so I'm sure this thing is gonna spin super fast and really zip through some of those saplings. And this one has a little bit of a different, if you can see these blades on here, a little bit different than the other ones I've tried so far. This is a little bit more like a circular saw blade. 
So friends, if you enjoyed seeing that chainsaw style blade put in action, please give the video a thumbs up and help support my channel. My goal of this video is to show you how that blade works so you can make a wise decision and see if it's right for you. I haven't put it in any like tall grass yet. I think that that blade is actually gonna work the best in brush and saplings and some trees like this. All right, friends, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.